What's up, guys? Hot new peer. It's been a while since I've posted anything on YouTube or whatever. Um, you know, uh, not entirely certain the direction that I want to go with the channel. And uh, I kind of want to keep things more on the, the privacy level. Because, you know, being in the middle of nowhere, uh, now that I've got, you know, a, a good portion of the homestead or whatever built, you know, I've kind of... I Hopefully I've shown that basically anyone can come out here... Um, and homestead or whatever it it is it is you know a little bit rough you know just uh we're in canada here or i'm in canada here and surviving the winter is you know it, it's next level it's not like we're homestead in the states or whatever um but i mean the perk is of course there's not what there's no one around so a lot of privacy and um kind of want to continue that a little bit online you know have some sort of uh privacy because it, it's it's relaxing you know, not, not having to be on your guard all the time or something like that, you know. So, um, I'm not a big fan of, of uh, you know, playing the monkey or whatever and, and uh, you know, adhering to the communities or whatever, you know. Um, basically, being a clown or whatever online. That's kind of what these shorts are. I'm trying to, like, was trying to balance... Uh, between being the monkey, being the clown, and, you know, try to push something a little bit educational, but, eh, I'm not sure, like, I don't know if it's worth it, doesn't seem like it's worth it, so, um, I'll leave him up for now, so, uh, anyways, I have been doing stuff, I guess, and programming, and that's kind of what this video is, I'm gonna get more technical, I guess, these days, a little less focus on the homesteading aspect, because I've, I've already... Uh, done a good portion of that. Um, I still have a lot of more building to do, but um, at the same time, you know, I'm a programmer and or hacker or whatever you want to call. But um, uh, apparently, I'm naturally drawn to that sort of thing. So, yeah, uh, I was setting up my inverters for monitoring, and there seems to be a bit of a lack of solutions. And next thing you know, I'm I, uh, developing this monstrosity or whatever. So. Uh, I think this will be a game changer for the industry potentially because, well, I am reinventing the wheel a little bit, but uh, from what I understand, they're kind of, uh, you know, it, it seems to be mostly like hardware solutions or uh, kind of closed source things. I don't know. Uh, it is, is a standard sort of thing. So anyways... Um, after a bit of learning, you know, I realized that I was essentially creating something that's already existed, except, uh, you know, in Python and open source. And you can basically put it on like any device that can run Python. So great. Whoopee. Um, I don't know. Maybe the industry will catch on. Maybe it won't. But uh, I'll go over it a little bit. I just finished rewriting a good portion of this to make it very uh, flexible. So... Let's first show what the point of this was. So I have Home Assistant here running on my cluster, uh, which is just a thin client, which is nice and cool. You know, you can, you can kind of see here, AMD embedded, blah, blah, blah. What, what is this? You know, it's, a, it's some random HP thin client. It's a T640. It's cheap. uses like 10 watts. And, you know, I got a bunch of VMs running. And then, you know, I got another VM in, in the shed for monitoring the batteries there. So, great. So... TLDR, um, plug in a USB cable from my inverter into, uh, into a, basically a PC or whatever, running Linux, and can now monitor all this garbage over Home Assistant. Uh, Home Assistant itself is a little bit buggy, so I, in the long run, I may add like other platform supports and whatnot. So uh, the way of communicating to, with Home Assistant is through MQ2. MQTT, so I hope it was here. We got my devices, yada yada, and uh, yeah, that's the main reason for this project. So the inverters, or my inverters, anyways, are communicating over uh, Modbus, and with this new setup, oh, let me go to the configurations. We have Modbus R2, RTU to MQTT, and this is basically what I've got here for the configuration. And hopefully, by looking at the configurations, you can see. It's like some flexible thing, thus the term protocol gateway or whatever and in Python. So what we're doing is we're converting Modbus RTU to MQQ, ah, MQTT. Now Modbus RTU is a uh, 
or Modbus in general, is a protocol that is um, pretty basic. And if you end up connecting and you don't know what you're connecting to, things could be screwed up. You just basically end up with a bunch of random data. And you have no idea what's what. So that it's one of those protocols where you have to define like the, the registries and the locations or whatever, and thus the need for this like sort of conversion process to get it into MQTT. So I've started off by creating a folder here for protocols. And uh, these are just CSV files. And uh, let's go to Sigineer. So we have a holding registry and input registry. So it's just a CSV and all that's in the CSV is uh, system status, system, like your, your variable names, the location, the data type, and some other things. Oh, sorry, right here. Variable name, data type, register, uh, documented name, description, values, unit, etc. And basically, this just gives uh, an easy way to uh, interface with uh, Modbus and convert it or whatever. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the gist of it. So if I go back to Home Assistance, we can see this uh, Sigineer here device. Um, and everything from Modbus is translated into these MQTT uh, topics and stuff, which eventually, you know, which get sent to Home Assistance, which you can use in Home Assistance or whatever in this case. You can obviously do this with, like, anything that supports MQTT. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. There's going to be a bit of over the place because, um, like I said, this project is me diving deep down the reinventing rabbit hole. So, um, yeah, this is to be a protocol gateway eventually and will allow for more than just Modbus RTU to MQTT, but stuff like uh, that's already existing or whatever and pretty standard like Modbus RTU to uh, Modbus TCP. So just a simple conversion. And here's an example configuration of what that will be like. Um, yeah, this is basically it. So uh, if you want to use this as like a, a Modbus uh, TCP server or converter, whatever you want to call it, basically you're signing Modbus RTU over Ethernet and in this case TCP. There's also UDP, uh, SO, S, uh, TLS or whatever. Um, and then we're going to also support more uh, protocols or IM, I guess. I don't know. Depends on if someone joins in terms of the Wii, but there's going to be more protocols supported like CAN bus. So in the long run, you're going to be able to say, just plug in a Raspberry Pi and a USB uh, adapter to say your car. And then you can read your ODB2 information, push it to home assistance. I don't know. Maybe you want to do that. Read, uh, read how fast you're going on your home assistance thing or whatever. I don't know. But uh, that's kind of the gist. You know, it's not going to be limited to just home assistance. This should, you know, be a... So, yeah, that's all we're doing here is we're uh, forwarding the Modbus uh, data or information to here. So you can see, you know, I can monitor, say, uh, my battery bank or inverter. So you can see the output voltage of my inverter hertz basically whatever is being transmitted through Modbus RTU, and you can make a nice little interface. And um, it's just a, a transport layer or so. Uh, and then here I have another solar setup just running in the shed, which runs the, the shed and chicken coop and um, and whatnot. And uh, this one's a Sigineer inverter. So they're all kind of the same. If you have a um, an inverter, it's got like a USB port on it, or even just the RS-485 port or... Uh, something labeled BMS that looks like an RJ45 connector. That's probably Modbus. Like that, all of these inverters they have very similar hardware underneath. They're all using the same standards more or less. So they're pretty much all just running Modbus RTU. And even these um, what do you call these other these newer more portable ones? They they basically just steal from each other and clone the hardware and whatnot. So. Um, uh, the, these these portable ones, even though you don't have a, a, a port for it underneath, they're still running Modbus RTU, you, you know, the stackable ones or whatever, because they're all, you know, kind of copying from each other and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, this works for, like, everything solar, everything, like the batteries and everything. And then, uh, like I said, a PLC, yeah, PLC automation, cars, automotive, it works for a lot of things for monitoring. So I think there's a lot of potential here for this project. 
Um, we'll see if it gets uh, accepted as like an industrial standard or whatever. Uh, if we get to that level um, over time with its development. So, you know, I got first got to make it, then I got to make it stable, then got to make it reliable, fast, you know, all that sorts of stuff. Um, so, so far it's pretty reliable in the way that I've made it is um, if it crashes, just restart. So that's good enough for this sort of thing, uh, this level of monitoring. Obviously, if you get into automation or if this gets into automation, it's going to have to be uh, a little quicker, snappier and so far. So when it does crash, um, if it does crash, you uh, are back up right away or whatever in a production environment because you don't want it crashing, period. Um, in a, like if you're running like a factory or whatever with this, I, I don't know if we'll get to that level. But uh, in terms of automation, but, uh, you know, you want maximum reliability. So I don't know. Uh, I don't have experience in the automation industry. It just, uh, you know, you, you start programming with flexibility in mind. And next thing you know, you're creating something that can be used everywhere. So that's where we're at, down the rabbit hole. Uh, let's see now. I'm going to just do a quick video to show the setup here of what I got on the hardware side so you guys can get an idea. And I think that should be enough of an introduction. All right, so we have my inverter here. It's uh, running pretty hard or whatever, thus the noise. And you can see underneath we got some USB ports. I'm connected in the USB port as uh, it's convenient, but um, you could probably also connect into this one here. Uh, do you have to be worried with USB A because US, like the reason for USB B, is to prevent uh, two five volt uh, voltages being sent from two different sources. So you have the USB B connector, which uh, you know makes sure that only that guy there is supplying uh, five volt voltage. But um, theoretically, you can probably connect USB A. I'm not sure if you have to turn on and off the voltage. Your device is going to be a little bit different. If you have a RS-232 port instead of the USB port, all you have to do is get a, um, a serial converter, a USB serial uh, converter, and then you can connect in. And then I've also got a connection here for uh, for Modbus. Uh, with it, just a simple USB converter is like two bucks or whatever from AliExpress from China. And uh, I've just got it crimped here and into the battery here. Now, one thing kind of pain with these batteries is I was hoping that uh, I could tap into this uh, this network, but uh, these two networks are separate, unfortunately. So I am currently only connecting to the one battery here. Um, what I'll need to connect to all of them is either maybe I can do some janky stuff. So if I connect this port to this port, uh, assuming the wiring is compatible, there's a chance that these batteries might just... Um, then forward the data here. But what I found is I have to directly connect to each battery. That's a limitation on SOK. Um, their daisy chaining is not really working very well with the, the RS-485A port. Um, it should work here because uh, these two batteries are sending over information and that brings to like the next part of this little project which is I want to be able to get into the CAN bus because how I'm communicating with these batteries from the inverter is through the CAN bus and the inverter can see both of these batteries when they're connected uh, like this or or whatever. So um, likewise, if you connect to the RS-232 port, I'm using another person's project, but I'm gonna implement the same thing on this project, um, is you can connect to, you can get information on all of your batteries just by going into the RS-232 port. So if you have an SOK battery, you probably wanna use the, the 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 protocol that I have yet to implement yet, but it'll be implemented um, Just for like uh, ease of setup anyways, but that's kind of the gist for the hardware setup you take your your computer device whatever plop Linux on it and uh, You know, you're gonna need home assistance or somewhere and then you can monitor and control everything um, And whatnot Yeah Pretty simple, just control everything via USB and a computer. For the most part. And home assistance, whatever. Anyways, let's get back. 
So if you guys are interested, you want to want monitor your own solar setups or whatever, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just follow the instructions in the Git repository here. I'll put a link in there. Um, and uh, yeah, then you can monitor. Writing is a little bit more tricky, but I am sending over... Uh, you can write, we'll say, for now. But um, it's a little more technical if you want to write stuff to it. So here's an example. This is a different device, but uh, you you have to uh, send a packet over MQTT. Currently, the write topic has a, a prefix for slash write. Um, I, it's still in a pro work in progress, so I'm going to figure that one out a little bit more if I want to uh, just keep it as the same topic, because I could just... I could theoretically program it to be this way, um, or I can make it user configurable. And then I'm also thinking maybe I need to add an additional topic to say, this is where you can write to, um, these topics here or whatever. Uh, I don't think, I'm, I don't know, it, it's a little, eh. it, it needs more work. We'll put it that way. So in terms of the writing. And then once you can write to it, you can then, uh, go and create scripts and whatnot. So this is not MQTT, but this will get you the general idea. Um, you can publish, uh, oh, sorry, this is MQTT. This is a different project and I did uh, enable MQTT. I use MQTT to control things and this is a totally different project, but this is how I uh, control my thermostat using like a ESP32 or whatever, but different project, but you get the idea. Um, you can, uh, I don't know, a lot of people wanted to be able to change the, the schedule to start charging or something. Um, you should be able to do that, but uh, I don't personally need any of that because I'm off grid, so. Hmm. Um, yeah, there's more to come with the project. Uh, check it out, guys.